Ooh, chocolate pie. Key lime pie. Raspberry pie. We might need this one after. Well, the first thing you're gonna need is an actual Raspberry Pi. Now I've gone with the Raspberry Pi 3 here, as it comes with everything you're going to need. It's got four USB ports, albeit they're 2.0, Ethernet, a little slot to hold the camera. If you don't want to use the camera, you can go ahead and get a webcam as long as you have the drivers for it and just hook it up through USB. Same thing with the display. Although we do have HDMI out, there is a display that you can hook up to it. There's also the power, which is a micro USD. Your GPIO or your general purpose input output. We'll be using these later on in the course to actually make things with this. Now the Raspberry Pi 3's processor is a quad core 1.2 gigahertz processor, so it's more than powerful enough for what we're going to do with it. And we actually do have the ability to have audio and video come out of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, albeit I've never used it. And we also have the micro SD card slot, which of course we're also going to need one of those too. So let me go ahead, we'll set this aside. The next thing we are going to need is a micro SD card, uh, any class 10 over eight gigabytes should do. And then of course, you're also gonna want an adapter so that you can actually put this into your computer to load up an operating system on. You're also gonna want some way to power it. And there's really two ways to power it. The first way is, well, with a wall plug with a micro SD end on it, you're gonna want one that's five volt, 2.5 amps. The Pi 3 is quite power hungry for, well, compared to the, the other Pis. So you are gonna wanna make sure you do get up around that 2.5 amp. Another thing I highly recommend is a case and there's a ton of them out there. Really, it's just a matter of picking the one that you think looks the coolest. And there's even a lot of custom ones out there. If you're into 3D printing, there's uh, a lot of templates for it. This is the one I use here at home. This is my desktop one. But yeah, they generally range between five to, well, 15 bucks. I think I paid for that, that one. So not that expensive at all. Now for setting up the first time, I would also recommend to have a short HDMI cable, an ethernet cable, a keyboard and mouse, preferably corded USB models. Now these are USB models, but they're, they're cordless. I like the cordless aspect of it, and I haven't had a problem with these ones yet. But to be fair, once I actually get it set up, I just SSH into my Raspberry Pi. I very seldom ever actually hook it, up, hook it up to a TV anymore. And that's it for the things that you need. So let's go ahead and actually start putting the Pi together. So I'm gonna start off with the board and let's go with the red case. I haven't used this one yet. So just take it apart. Looks like it comes apart pretty easily. You can see where the micro SD card slot goes. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Hopefully it's not one of those cases that makes it hard to put it in and out. No, you can still see it pretty good in there. All right, that's down firm. Let's go ahead. Right, just clipped right in. That was actually pretty easy. Uh, the GPIO pins, we do have access to it from the side. Don't need it right now. Same thing with the ports. Let's go ahead and put this on. And they're actually labeled, that's pretty cool. I did not notice that. And of course, there's certain things called hats that you can put on. We'll look at those a little bit later on in the course, but you will have access to, it looks like the Sense hat that we can put on up here. So there we go. It's put together. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get that SD card. Let's get an operating system on it and get it in there. Now, if you're missing a lot of these things, you can actually just go ahead and hit something like Amazon or maybe even your Radio Shack or some sort of electronic store near you. They sell kits where a lot of this stuff's already included in it. So you'll get your, your micro SD card and it'll probably already have a, an operating system on it. You'll get a Raspberry Pi, usually a case. That's actually how I got this one here. It's from my first kit. I'll usually have the power supply and a couple cables. Sometimes they'll throw in a little few other things like, uh, well, depending on the size of the kit you want to get, there'll be resistors or little LED lights and everything else. I'll go ahead and leave a link down below to a couple that I like. But let's go ahead and let's get started. 
Now, if you didn't pick up a kit or your SD card does not have an operating system for you, we're going to go ahead and head over to raspberrypi.org. We're going to come over to the download section. And we're just going to download the Raspbian. And at the time of this recording, Raspbian Jesse with Pixel is out. So we're going to go ahead and download this. Now, it's actually quite a large download. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it ahead of time. But right now, it's about 1.5 gig. I've already inserted the SD card that I'm going to be using for my Raspberry Pi. And this is the image I've downloaded. So it came across with the date and uh, the name. Now I'm on a Mac and the tool I am going to use is called Apple Pie Baker. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it down below, as well as a couple tools for window use. The one thing you want to make sure is that you go ahead and format your SD card, especially if you've added something else on here, as just doing a regular format will not get rid of all the hidden partitions. So if I go ahead, uh, take a look at the info. I have 128 gig capacity. Now I've already actually gone ahead, selected it and hit prepare for noobs, which will go ahead and format it and get rid of all of those hidden partitions. So all I have to do now is just go ahead and restore from backup. I'm just going to go from the desktop. Grab the image I want. Hit open. And it's going to go automatically. We don't have to do anything. And it's probably going to take a little while. So I'll go and, well, through the magic of editing, we'll fast forward. There we go, we see my SD card disappear. So it's gonna take about 12 minutes. Oh, nine. Well, oh, back up to 11. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and we'll pause the recording and we'll come back. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad. It actually only took about five minutes to do. Now let's go ahead, eject that card, and we'll go ahead and stick it into the Pi. Okay, so now the setup. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and put the card in. And just make sure it's snug. You'll know if it won't go in anymore, it's done. Set the adapter up so I don't lose it. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up my keyboard and mouse next. I'll do the HDMI. Ethernet. And then lastly, power. Now the reason why you want to do power last is because once you put power into your Pi, <laughs> I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, once you've powered your Pi, it automatically turns on. There's no on off switch. You can get cables that have on off switches. I do not have one. So I've got another camera set up to record the first boot. I really did want to capture the first boot. So let's power this on and see what happens. Now for this part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and actually record the TV screen as I want to make sure I capture that initial boot up. Uh, for subsequent videos, we're going to go ahead and just use a screen capture or more than likely I'll go ahead and just we'll, we'll learn how to SSH in or even use a remote desktop. But I want to make sure we capture this initial boot up. Now your initial boot can take a while to actually get done. It's usually not too bad. It's probably going to flash a few times. But once we actually get to the desktop, it's not too bad. And once we get to the actual desktop, we're going to come over and click this little icon here. This opens up our terminal. There's a couple of commands here we want to run in the terminal just to go ahead and make sure that we're updated. And this first one is going to be sudo app hyphen get update. And that's going to go out and basically figure out what's installed on our system and check to see if there's any updates for it. If you're not familiar with the way Linux works, I'm not going to bog you down with that now. This is not the video for it. Once that is done, we're going to use the next command, which is sudo app hyphen get upgrade. And this will go ahead and grab all of the updates that we need. Then take a look here at the bottom. It's asking us if we want to go ahead and upgrade or not. Just select yes. Now, periodically throughout your installation, you're going to be asked if you want to maybe save certain config files or overwrite stuff. Just pick the default settings, whatever it's asking or whatever it's providing you. Now, depending on what version you're upgrading from, it's going to ask you different things. So if you're really not sure, just a little bit of Google searching, we'll go ahead and figure that all out for you. But once we've got it done, all we have to do is just go ahead and just turn it off. And in the next video, we'll look at how to SSH in and also how to set up a remote desktop for us to work in. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. 
So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>